Hi everyone, it's Nicole here today with some alcohol lift ink backgrounds created with alcohol inks and honeybee stamps stencils. I created the backgrounds and then die cut them into shapes to put on the front of cards. So kind of trimming down the backgrounds still have lots of leftover that can be used for other cards. I am going to be creating this set of five cards today. They are all fairly similar. I've just used some different dies and sentiments for each of the cards after I created the backgrounds. We're gonna start by creating the backgrounds. This first one is the blue background created with pool, sailboat, denim and silver metallic mixative. I really just kind of added drops of the alcohol inks all over the Upo paper, added some blending solution, made a mess all over my fingers, which is always great. For some reason, I cannot do alcohol ink without making a ginormous mess all over my hands. I'm gonna put the, the blending solution all over and then just kind of tip my cardstock back and forth. I'm going to take a straw and blow that ink around a little bit to get it moving. And just kind of keep playing with these inks until I get it looking exactly the way I want. I'm adding more blending solution, doing a little bit more blowing the ink, moving it around. I'm gonna add some more color here and there where I definitely need some additional ink colors. This started out as a practice of just playing with alcohol inks to create some different backgrounds. I'm gonna add the silver mixative now and quickly add some blending solution to that so it moves a little bit easier. And then again, just blow this around and mix up the ink. Kind of a lot more silver mixative than I think I really wanted So I'm gonna add more color. And you can see it starts to immediately move where there's blending solution. And again, just blowing that ink through a straw to get that ink to move a little bit more. What I love about alcohol ink is that you can play with it and keep messing with it as much as you want to. There were some areas I really, it just wasn't working. So I put a little of the blending solution on a felt ink blending pool, to, ink blending tool. And then I went ahead and pounced some of that out to help it move some more, added a little more blending solution, blew that until I was happy with the background. And then I'm gonna set this aside to dry. That really worked, um, it blended it out beautifully. I'm gonna skip ahead to where I have my background completely dry. I'm going to tape it down with a little post-it tape and take the Honey Bee Stamps Geometric Background Stencil and I'm going to be removing or lifting some of that ink with the alcohol lift ink. I would definitely recommend having a scrap piece of paper Handy, I'm using the post-it tape because it's right there and I'm not gonna reuse it. And I'm putting a little alcohol lift ink on my felt ink blending tool round there and then I'm pouncing it or rubbing it through the stencil to lift that ink. And then I'm gonna take a dry, clean paper towel and wipe away that excess ink. Much like if you use the alcohol lift ink with a stamped image where you kind of blot it dry and then rub that design away, I'm going to do that here. And you're gonna see that you're gonna get some really cool results. It's not gonna be perfect. That's not the look we're going for. We're just looking for this really cool stenciled effect where we've lifted some of the ink away from the background. So it gives it a little bit of a pattern. It's a really cool thing. Um, try it with the stencils you have at home. There are so many cool kind of effects you can get here. So I'm blotting up that, that alcohol lift ink and then buffing it out and buffing it dry 
to reveal this cool effect. So there is my first background. I'll go ahead and set this one aside. And there's a pink background that I'm going to be creating on screen here in a second. Now I did not like this green background, so I wanted to show you how I took some of the blending solution and I just went ahead and went completely over my background with this blending solution to kind of get rid of what was happening there before. I didn't leave in the actual inking, I just wanted to show you how I fixed it and salvaged the Yupo paper. And I'm gonna go back in with some green colors of alcohol ink. In this case, we're using citrus, botanical, patina, and copper metallic. And I'm just going to start creating a different green background. I'm applying my ink colors kind of at an angle, blowing that ink around. Again, the alcohol inks were just lay down kind of randomly. I was playing around creating backgrounds. I wanted to try the alcohol lift technique with stencils, but didn't really have a plan for these backgrounds. This project started out as playing around with alcohol inks and alcohol lift ink, and then progressed actually several weeks later into backgrounds for these cards that I die cut down. Um, sometimes I think it's just very relaxing and fun to play with our alcohol inks and see what kind of effects you can get. So you can always find a great project to make with these. Add a little bit more ink here. Just playing with the ink, I'm going to again, set this aside, let it completely dry, and come back to this with a different stencil. I ended up using stencils from the polka dot background from Honey Bee Stamps several times. I'm gonna use a couple different sizes of the polka dot stencils. This is about the medium size. I really love the circle effect. So see when I lift that up, you can start seeing the alcohol lift ink, lifting that ink away. I think at first you can kind of pounce it and then rub it on. My other suggestion is to not use a ton of the alcohol lift ink on the felt pad. Wipe away that ink as you're lifting it away so you're not just smearing it around and that you're actually lifting. If you get too much ink on or the, of the alcohol lift ink on your tool, it could seep underneath the stencil and you're going to lose that fantastic design. So I don't re-ink mine a lot, just a little bit here and there. And look at that awesome polka dot design on this beautiful alcohol inked background. So this polka dot really ended up being one of my favorites, any of the polka dot stencils. I'm always a sucker for circles like this and I think it's fun. I blotted that ink dry, buffed that ink out and away. This time I'm going to take a felt pad and apply the inks to that and then do kind of a stripe design back and forth. This is a little bit more of a controlled type of alcohol inked background with pink sherbet, raspberry, and wild plum inks. And we're gonna go back and forth and create our background here with these. I love this color combination. I used this color combination twice, so there'll be a couple of different backgrounds with this color combination today. And we're gonna go all the way down the panel and you can always go back, blend more. I kind of kept playing and working with this to get the results exactly the way I wanted them to look. And get that transition of color, that nice ombre effect. I went over the sections multiple times, adding in all of my color. The felt applicators work fantastic for this. 
And I did use a clean one so that the color would be accurate when I went from a dark color back to a light. After this background is dry, I'm gonna use a larger polka dot background stencil to do the lift technique. The lift technique definitely, I think, works probably the best with this kind of an application for the background. So a more controlled application, you're gonna get a lot more seamless, consistent result with your alcohol lift. I'm starting kind of down here in this corner, lifting, wiping away that ink on a scrap piece of paper, or in this case, the post-it tape, and just working my way up the design. You can even start to see it lighten there. And I always like to see how it's working and you can see the results are gonna be phenomenal with this one. So you can kind of have a little less um, distinct alcohol lift ink stenciled background, or this one is a for definite pattern. You see all of those polka dot circles, they show up really well. Um, when you're not dropping the ink on the UPO paper, but instead kind of swiping it in some sort of a pattern, I think you're gonna see some really awesome results with the alcohol lift ink. We'll go ahead and blot this dry, buff it out, and there is our third background. Now with these same colors of ink, I'm gonna go ahead and do the drops again. So we have another kind of more messy type of background. We'll be using a different stencil with this background. But I loved these colors and I just wanted to try another type of alcohol ink background. I'm just adding drops of these colors all over. And then we can take our straw, blow these around. You're gonna get a completely different effect, but with the exact same colors. Because these colors, I think, were more in the, what I call love theme, with the pinks and reds, I went ahead and used heart dies for these. So these cards are gonna be the ones where I use the layered hearts and then the scalloped hearts dies from Honey Bee. Now I wasn't totally in love with my background, so I'm just kind of pouncing on some um, blending solution with my felt applicator, um, adding in some mixative, just playing around with this, moving the ink around. I really played with this background a long time, trying to get it to look exactly the way I wanted it to. Totally didn't really love that either, but that is the beauty of UPO paper and alcohol inks, is that you are able to go over this and rework it as many times as you need to. Um, sometimes you might do something that doesn't completely work, and I thought it was really important to share that with you because there are some definite fails in this kind of crafting, maybe. Um, or maybe it's just for me, but I think you can rework it as many times as you need to. We can set this one aside and we're gonna talk about our final color combination today. And that's kind of some oranges and reds. I kind of call this my sunset background. Love these colors. This is red pepper, salmon, watermelon, and sandal. And I really, Almost wish I would have left it just like this. Um, I love this background. I think it's so beautiful. I'm gonna share the alcohol lift with my final two backgrounds and these stencils. This is the Chevron Arrows from Honey Bee Stamps. Again, we've got a clean felt pad here on our applicator. We're gonna apply some alcohol lift ink to this and then go over the surface of this. I'm going kind of gently at first and then a little bit more pressure, wiping away that ink as we're starting to lift it away and work our way across the entire surface of this background. And it's gonna give a really awesome result. I thought the chevron turned out really cool. And you're not seeing a ton of the chevron design until you start buffing and wiping away that ink and then look at the magic of the alcohol lift ink 
It is really lifting away that ink, which is so amazing. I added a little bit more of the lift ink to my felt applicator and I'm gonna go over some of these areas to try to lighten it even more. And that really helped. I'm gonna blot that dry and then buff away the excess ink with a clean dry paper towel. And I felt like there were still a couple areas that could use a little work, so I went ahead and added even more. And you're definitely seeing that chevron design. Let's do our final sunset background. We're gonna go back to our geometric background stencil, the one we used for the blue background. And we're gonna use that on this one. To clean your stencils, if they get some alcohol, alcohol ink on them, you can use a little rubbing alcohol, you could use blending solution, and use a clean paper towel to wipe them completely clean. So I've added a little bit of my alcohol lift ink to a clean felt pad, and we're gonna pounce it through our geometric background stencil, and then start applying a little bit more pressure and work our way all the way across the stencil and you're gonna start seeing that awesome design show up. Blot that dry, buff that out, and finish the rest of the stencil. I'm gonna quickly go over how I created my backgrounds, but I'm not going to do all of them, or not my backgrounds, how I'm gonna to put together my card with these backgrounds, but I'm not going to go ahead and put them all together on camera. At the end of the video, I will be showing you and going through all of the product I used for each card, so you can see exactly what was used for each. But because they are all the same basic design, I thought we could just maybe put one together on camera to save a little bit of time. This is another background that I kind of gently worked on and kept working on until I got the desired lift result. And we're just blotting dry and then buffing that out, which is going to reveal the awesome stencil design. And let's take a look really quick at all of the backgrounds that we're going to be using. Now we're going to put together all of our cards. I'm going to be stamping sentiments from various Honey Bee stamp sets on vellum and I'm going to stamp them with a clear embossing ink and heat emboss with white embossing powder. Then we'll be die cutting these sentiments with banners. Most of these were die cut with sentiment banner dies. There's gonna be one of these sentiments that is die cut with its own banner die that comes with that set and I'll go over that at the end of the video when I show what stamps and dies I used for each. But all of my cards feature a stamped sentiment on vellum, heat embossed with white, and then die cut into a banner shape. This is going to fit below our die cut sentiment on the card. We're gonna take that banner die, line it up, and then die cut it. What I love about banner dies or strip dies is that you don't have to stamp it perfectly straight on your paper because you can die cut it straight with the banner or strip die. Then each background was created from Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock. 
stamped with the Lawn Fawn Manatee ink in some sort of tone-on-tone -tone design. We're going to use several different Simon Says stamp backgrounds. We've die cut our alcohol lift ink stenciled background into a shape. In this case, we've got a heart matted on a scallop heart. And then we're going to have some layered die cut sentiments on that finished with embellishments. So for this background, we're using the Simon Says Stamp Quilted Hearts background stamped with manatee ink. Our background is actually going to measure four inches by five and a quarter. And it's instead of being centered, leaving a white border all the way around, we're actually going to put it in the lower right corner of a white top fold card base. So it's going to leave a white border along the left side and the top. And we're going to offset our shape, whether it is a star, a heart, or a hexagon, off one side, whether it be the right side or the left. And then we've die cut our sentiment. In this case, we are using the grateful dies from Honey Bee Stamps. And we've die cut that from the Lawn Fawn Fog cardstock and then the outline from white cardstock so it really pops. Each sentiment has been die cut twice and we're gonna stack those one on top of another to give it a little bit more presence. We're layering our die cut shape. This is the alcohol lifting background that is in the shape of a heart. We've matted it on a scallop white heart and then we're offsetting it off the right side of the background. We'll just trim off that excess. And then we're going to add our grateful die on top. And how I'm going to do this is glue one layer of the sentiment on our white shadow background. Pop this in place on our heart. Then we're going to layer our vellum sentiment banner. And then we will glue the second layer of the die cut on top of that. Kind of helps sandwich our little banner. I'm anywhere that the banner is not underneath part of this, the die cut sentiment. I am adding little dots of glue underneath this, underneath the embossed areas of the sentiment to hide my adhesive. And it does hide it really well, I think. I'm going to just gently lay the second layer of the grateful sentiment on top. And then we're going to tuck here. I'm going to add those little dabs of glue underneath some of the embossing. We're going to tuck the one end underneath the loop in the letter G and line that up right underneath the die cut word. So pretty, very classy and elegant, and the alcohol lifting stenciled background is just a really cool, fun technique where you've kind of created your own pattern paper. We're going to finish our card with a scattering of embellishments. I'm using some hearts here from Studia Kacha, and I will even finish with some pretty pink posh jewels. I didn't share that on camera, but all of my cards feature those. And here's just a look at lining up a die. I'm just finding the area of my background I like. You can see how much I have left over. I've saved those. You can die cut letters from these. You could die cut additional shapes. You could do all kinds of things with any of your leftover pieces from these awesome alcohol lift ink backgrounds. We're going to go over what Honeybee dies I used for each of these. So first we have our heart backgrounds. For these, I used the Grateful Honeybee stamp set and the coordinating dies. So here you can kind of see the dies and the stamps I used for those or for that card. The Because card uses the Because stamp set and coordinating dies. And then that heart I used is from the Stacking Hearts die collection and the scalloped heart that I matted it on is from the scalloped hearts dies. The background for both of these cards is the Simon Says Stamp quilted hearts background and I of course used the sentiment banners for both. 
Next, for our star background, this is the Hooray You Did It card. Great for maybe graduations. I used the Honeybee Stamps Hooray For You stamp set and of course the coordinating dies and the Stacking Stars dies with the Simon Says Stamp Falling Stars background stamp. My next two cards feature the hexagon shape. The Gracious card features the Goodness Gracious stamp set and coordinating dies. This is the one that has its own banner. The Enjoy card uses the Enjoy stamp set and the coordinating Enjoy dies. And I use the sentiment banner for that one. And both cards feature the hexagon frames used to die cut our alcohol lift ink backgrounds into those shapes. And then I use the Simon Says Stamp Lattice Grid and Tiny Dots and Hearts backgrounds for these cards. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for these alcohol lift ink backgrounds created with alcohol inks and honeybee stamp stencils. The supplies I use to create my cards are li listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring alcohol lift or alcohol ink techniques that you might be interested in. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll catch you next time.